Awusia wanga na TV na muhe mo bibia akwa ba eje bu eje bu eje nya ba ora alan kwojo chamatin alan cash wa beka sa wo chese MPP party no ene wo film ai wo film kura akofo mini de movement for change akofo mini de a ni de no afafanto e butterfly na e ye symbol a wo chese obekko 2024 obekko as independent candidate na wa cheche mu e kwan a fa so a obejo ni MPP e sa e ba na nimu a bedru se 2023 year omukko super delegate no mo SCC e any previously no mo SCC a odi na ni to a ohun ni se adwuma a waye nyina no eh mpp for no mpani for no ne omo aka ni bi no ona ni omo ni so nti ene ye se ofim no no a e form ne party nti wa chechire mu a ye nko ne nko nko tie abra wo chechire mu a e kodru se wo se wo firim wo form ne party na oba ama mabunu no ye nko ne nko tie mra fellow countrymen and women friends from the media distinguished invited guests ladies and gentlemen let me start first by expressing my profound gratitude to you all for accepting my invitation to attend this press conference here today. I give thanks to the Almighty God for his manifold blessings in my life and for his grace and mercy. I wish also to use this platform to express my heartfelt appreciation to each and every one of you, particularly the rank and file of the new patriotic party, MPP, who have believed in my vision, who have stood by me through thick and thin, and who have shown an unwavering faith in the promise of a brighter future for Ghana. Your belief in the possibilities of our nation and your dedication to the ideals of progress, unity, and prosperity have been nothing short of inspiring. It is important for me at the outset to provide a historical context for what has occasioned this press conference today. In 1992, when the new patriotic party was established, a group of young, dynamic business executives and professionals came together to establish the Young Executives Forum, YEF, under my chairmanship. The YEF, since 1992, became the financial backbone of the party and provided significant financial resources to support the party in all its endeavors including providing the seed fund for the purchase of the party's first national headquarters building. As chairman of the YEF, I had the privilege of serving as a member of the National Executive Committee and the National Council of the party. In addition to this, I served as a leading member of various committees of the party. In 1996, after the unsuccessful attempt by the flag, first flag bearer of the party, Professor Albert Edubwahi, to win the general elections, the membership of the Young Executive Forum nominated me to contest the 1996 presidential primaries alongside leading personalities such as Professor Edubwahi, Mr. J. Kufo, Dr. Jani Selby, Dr. Kwame Safodu, Mr. J. H. Mensa, and Dr. Jones Oforiata. I was prevailed at that time upon by some senior members of the party, in particular, Mr. Akenteng Apiamenka and Mr. Stephen Preku, both of blessed memory, to sacrifice the opportunity to contest for the leadership of the party and rather support my senior colleague aspirant. From 1996 to 2000, I played a leading role in supporting the bid of the then candidate J.A. Kufo to win the general elections and become president of the Republic of Ghana in 2001. Hmm. 
after refusing appointment as a cabinet minister in the aftermath of the elections. The president then persuaded me to become MPP's first ambassador to the United States of America, a position I served with distinction. I was subsequently appointed in 2003 as Minister for Trade and Industry and Presidential Special Initiatives to implement a new paradigm of economic development, which I had introduced in 2001 on the assumption of office by President Kufo. Between 2003 and 2007, I led the government's program for enhancing private sector development and ushering a golden age of business in Ghana. In 2007, I joined a distinguished group of 17 presidential aspirants to contest in the presidential primaries of the MPP. In that election, under very strange circumstances, the electoral process was truncated on the day of the election on account of accusations leveled against me of influencing the course of the elections. This strategy was designed to create disfavor against me in an attempt to diminish my popularity and the massive support I enjoyed amongst the rank and file of the grassroots of the party. In spite of this unfortunate occurrence, however, when the votes were finally counted, Nana Adudankwa Ekufuado came first and I was the runner-up. According to the rules of the electoral process at that time, the two of us were programmed for a second round ballot. It was in response to this development that I made my landmark declaration that to avoid a further deterioration of peace in an already divided party, I would make the supreme political sacrifice not to contest the runoff, but rather support my senior brother, Nana Adudankwe Kufuado, to contest as the flag bearer for MPP. To contest as the flag bearer for MPP in the 2008 general elections. Despite the sacrifice I made to unite the party, as referred to above, there were very serious post-primary attacks on my supporters all over the country and an open show of hostility. Some of my supporters were victims of brutalities and continue to bear the scars of that treatment. I made several representations to the then leadership of the party, drawing the attention to the rancorous and divisive behavior of some elements in the party. Regrettably, however, my representations went unheeded. As a consequence, I gave notice of my decision to resign from the party in protest against the blatant alienation of my supporters, orchestrated by elements aligned to the leadership of the party at that time. The protests and reactions from the rank and file of the party at that time from all over the country compelled the then chairman of the party to constitute a reconciliation committee chaired by the then immediate past chairman of the party, Ambassador Samuel Odoi Sykes. The committee upheld all my submissions and prevailed upon me to rescind my decision to resign, which I did, with a firm promise to address all the contentious issues I had raised in my notice of resignation. Unfortunately, however, all the promises made by the party leadership were never fulfilled, and indeed, the divisive and hostile attacks on my person and my supporters remained for several years thereafter and have continued to date. It is common knowledge that any party member who is associated directly or indirectly with Alan Chamatin 
is treated with disdain and considered an outcast. Fellow countrymen and women, on, I've endured all this resentment. I maintain my integrity within the party throughout the past 15 years. On assumption of office of the MPP in 2017, under the leadership of His Excellency Dana Abdudankwa Akufuado, I was appointed as Minister for Trade in Industry in the first term of the MPP administration and was retained in the same position by the President in the second term. During the past six years, I led the introduction and implementation of some of the most innovative and successful programs of the MPP, including the establishment of the One District, One Factory Initiative, the establishment of the African Continental Free Trade Area AFTA, with the headquarters of the Secretariat in Ghana, the development of new strategic anchor industries to diversify the economy in Ghana, including the automobile assembly and component manufacturing, the establishment of business resource centers and technology solution centers all over the country to provide comprehensive business development so solutions to micro, small, and medium enterprises. The introduction of the new integrated customs management system, otherwise referred to as UNIPAS, which has significantly enhanced mobilization of government revenue. The establishment of industrial parks, including the flagship Greater Kumasi Industrial City and Special Economic Zone. The development of a national export strategy with a target of achieving export revenue of 25 billion United States dollars by 2030. And last but not the least, the introduction of business regulatory reforms and public-private dialogue mechanisms to facilitate government's interaction with the private sector. In spite of the limited budget put at my disposal during my tenure as cabinet minister, I was able to deliver significant achievements for the government and my country. Fellow countrymen and women, I believe I've served my country and intend to continue to do so. On the 5th, on the 5th of January 2023, I resigned honorably from my position as cabinet minister and declared my intention in a national broadcast to contest the presidential primaries of the NPP. On the 26th of August this year, I participated in the Super Delegates Conference to shortlist the 10 aspirants who had filed their nominations to contest in the primaries. I was selected as one of the five candidates to contest for the main presidential primaries scheduled for the 4th of November, 2023. Fellow countrymen and women, after carefully analyzing the results of the Superdelegates Conference, I issued a press statement on the 6th of September this year, declaring my intention to exit the process leading to the presidential primaries. In the run-up to the Superdelegates Conference, the National Council of the Party made some of the most controversial and contentious decisions in the history of our party. They rejected a petition signed by nine out of the ten aspirants requesting for the Superdelegates Conference to be held in one location, as well as to allow each delegate at the conference to nominate five persons 
instead of one, in line with the provisions of our party's constitution. In my humble and considered opinion, the decisions of the National Council were both unmeritorious and unconstitutional. To make matters worse, it was absolutely clear, as I indicated in my press statement of the 6th of September this year, that the superdelegates conference was strategically and tactically skewed and maneuvered in favor of one particular aspect. Jesus. The level of intimidation and monetization that characterized the conference is unprecedented in the history of internal elections of our party. The subsequent decisions made by the National Council to vary the rules of procedure for the runoff arising from the Superdelegates Conference in direct contravention of both the constitution of the party and the guidelines which had been issued by the Presidential Primary Selections Committee will go down in history as a travesty of justice and a demonstration of high-handedness by the highest decision-making body of the party, second only to the annual delegates' conference. Fellow countrymen and women, I joined the new patriotic party at the very beginning of its establishment as a founding member, believing in its core values and the long-standing traditions of its antecedents, predicated on the principles of fairness, equity, probity, accountability, and transparency. I have devoted the best part of my professional career to serving the party, and I still believe in the vision of the founding fathers of the party. However, the MPP, as it exists now, has very little resemblance to the party that I joined in 1992 and held to Thank you, thank you, thank you. The party has been hijacked by a selected group of party leaders and elders, government appointees, behind, behind the curtain power brokers and some unscrupulous party apologies. It was my fervent wish it was my fervent wish to use the vehicle of their party to bring my God-given talents, experience, and knowledge applied both locally and internationally over a period of 46 years to serve our dear nation, Ghana, at the highest level of executive authority. It is abundantly clear to me that my services and contributions to the party are not appreciated. <laughs> and that my continual stay in the party will create further tension and divisions, which is an exact replay of the circumstances that led to my decision to resign from the party in 2008. Fellow countrymen and women, under the circumstances and given the context provided, I wish to use this platform to announce that I'm honorably resigning with immediate effect. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And I repeat, 
under the circumstances and given the context provided, I wish to use this platform to announce that I'm honorably resigning with immediate effect from the new patriotic party to contest for the high office of the president of the Thank you. Thank you very much. To contest. Thank you very much. To contest for the high office of the President of the Republic of Ghana in the 2024 general elections as an independent presidential candidate. Thank you very much. To, to actualize this goal, can we have some quietness, please? To actualize, to actualize this goal, I will establish and lead a new movement for change in Ghana. The brand logo for the movement is the Monarch Butterfly. Which which politically symbolizes change and transformation, hope and positivity. It also communicates strength, endurance, spirituality, and trust, which are all key traits that I cherish as a political leader. In Akan, it is known as Afafanto. The brand motto of the movement is Ghana will rise again. Ghana will rise again, which symbolizes hope for the future of Ghana. The new movement will be led and powered by the youth of Ghana. Out, out of the over 17 million registered voters in the 2020 general elections, the youth aged 18 to 35 years, constituted over 9.4 million voters, representing 55% of the total voters. This is a constituency that you cannot ignore. It is acknowledged without doubt that the youth represent the future of our country, and yet they constitute the most vulnerable section of our society. From available statistics, 85% of all prison inmates in Ghana are aged between 12 and 35 years. This is profoundly alarming. Fellow countrymen and women, it is also worth noting that every year, over 300,000 graduates from tertiary institutions in Ghana, excluding those from secondary institutions, enter the job market with little or no hope of finding a job. Clearly, public sector employment is not an option with an already over bloated public service. This
This phenomenon of a pervasive employment crisis is gradually becoming a national security threat, as evidenced by the recent Occupy Jilobi House demonstrations. The initial reaction of the police in manhandling some protesters is not the solution to the problem. What What Ghana, what Ghana needs now is change, which will provide long-lasting solutions to the challenges confronting our country. Fellow countrymen and women, I'm using this platform to introduce myself to you, the good people of Ghana, and humbly seek your support to become the next president of the Republic of Ghana. I believe, I believe with unwavering conviction that I am the only leader who can guarantee the economic and industrial transformation of our country, the restoration of confidence in political leadership, and the, unif and the unification of an increasingly divided nation. My unique selling proposition as a leader is vision, competence, integrity, and action. The four dominant themes for this change agenda will be pursued, which will be pursued by the movement are as follows. One, change the political status quo by moving Ghana beyond the duopoly of the two main political parties the New Patriotic Party and the National Democratic Congress. This, this will break divisive partisanship in governance in Ghana and bring an end to the winner-takes-all political syndrome. In addition, there's the need to promote reforms in the internal democratic processes and procedures of all political parties such as introducing one man, one vote to ensure inclusiveness and reduce the effect of monetization in politics. The principles underpinning our national elections must be reflected in the electoral processes of political parties in Ghana. Two, promote the establishment of a government of national unity, which would include people from all walks of life, irrespective of their political, religious, <laughs> ethnic affiliations. Rich, rich or poor, able-bodied or physically challenged, young or old, women and men. This will allow for effective and inclusive participatory governance. The movement will lead the formation of a government of the people, by the people, and for the people. <laughs> Number three, build consensus on a national development agenda, which will introduce a new paradigm shift that moves Ghana from growth and stability to economic transformation. This paradigm shift will be driven by my great transformational plan, GTP for Ghana, which puts the private sector and the business community at the center of our national development efforts. Four, inspire behavioral and attitudinal change in the people of Ghana. This would include, but not be limited to the following. A, enforcement of discipline. We as a people should appreciate the need for maintaining discipline in all spheres of our national lives, including changing our attitude to work. B, a war against corruption. Corruption, particularly from the public purse, denies our country the benefit of using our tax revenue resources for the development of our country. All sections of the Ghanaian society should wage a vigorous war on corruption through a combination of legal and institutional reforms, 
the application of technology, including artificial intelligence, blockchain technology, and data analytics, as well as maintaining societal pressure against corruption and leading by example. If elected as the president of this republic, I will sign a citizen's contract with the people of Ghana, committing myself to wage a relentless war against corruption. C, arrogance of power. As I've stated on previous occasions, the arrogance of power has been a major obstruction to progress in our country. People in positions of authority in this country must understand that leadership is an opportunity to serve the people and not to lord over them. In servant leadership, humility is an asset and not a weakness. D, passion for excellence. As a country, we must celebrate competence and excellence and not mediocrity. Advancement in the public sector in particular must be based on meritocracy and not patronage and protocol. Putting square pegs in round holes has been the biggest challenge for service delivery at every level in our governance structure. A significant shift in this regard will allow the best talents in our country, particularly the youth, to be deployed to achieve optimum performance in various institutions and organizations. E, solution-based thinking and a focus on execution. As a people, we must focus more on getting things done and finding solutions to problems rather than spending time on excessive and leadless debates. F, making laws work in Ghana. The lack of compliance and disrespect for laws, rules and regulations in Ghana is a major stumbling block for national development. As a people, we must commit ourselves to the sanctity and rule of law, to ensure peace, law, and order in our country. Last but not the least, patriotism. The pride of being Ghanaian and promoting good citizenship, as well as patronizing made in Ghana goods, is a development imperative. Fellow countrymen and women, Ghana is at a crossroads, and the dynamics of our time requires a transformational leader. I believe that I am the leader for this time. I have, I have already put forward for the consideration of our country the Great Transformational Plan, GTP, which will significantly deal with poverty and bring prosperity to our nation. The GTP is anchored on 10 pillars, namely one, building a strong macroeconomic environment, which will be characterized by a stable currency, low inflation, sustainable debt levels, revenue optimization, tight expenditure control, low competitive interest rates, strong external reserves backed by high levels of liquidity to support the financial sector. Two, introduce a new agricultural revolution for Ghana, which will first take advantage of both local, regional, and global markets. Secondly, be driven by technology, innovation, and cutting-edge research. Thirdly, optimize value for farmers through value chains. And fourthly, promote economies of scale in agriculture through large-scale commercial farming. Three, promoting industrial transformation through value addition and the establishment of strategic anchor industries to diversify the Ghanaian economy. This will also involve the establishment of industrial parks and special economic zones, as well as the aggressive promotion of small and medium-scale enterprises. Four, accelerated infrastructural development. Promoting private sector financing for public infrastructure such as roads, railways, ports, harbors, 
water supply systems, public housing, etc. This will reduce government's exposure to the financing of such infrastructural projects. Five, digital mainstreaming. Mainstreaming digitization in all government and public sector activities and bringing digital technologies to the doorstep of the ordinary Ghanaian. Six, energy security and diversification. Placing greater emphasis on the development of renewable sources of energy, including but not limited to nuclear and hydrogen energy. This will require fast-tracking the execution of government's strategy for energy transition. Seven, health. Expanding health infrastructure and services by enhancing private sector participation in health service delivery across the country, as well as improving the viability of the National Health Insurance Scheme. Eight, education. Undertaking a comprehensive review of existing reforms in the educational sector, particularly the free SHS program, to ensure optimum efficiency and effectiveness in its implementation. Government will pay special attention to institutionalizing the link between industry, academia, and educational institutions and reinforce the importance of apprenticeship and internship. Considering the critical importance of early childhood education, the development of new industrial, new, the development of new interventions in the educational sector will be to improve basic education in all its forms and nature, including but not limited to physical infrastructure, learning facilities, teacher training, and curriculum development. Nine, tourism. Encouraging private sector investments in the development of world-class tourism infrastructure, and also taking steps to leverage the tourism potential in each district and region of our country. In addition, my government will facilitate air travel for tourists coming into the country by providing free visas, including visas on arrival. Finally, the development of the creative industry in Ghana will be the backbone of the reforms in the tourism industry. This will include, but not be limited to the following creative industries, film, dance, theater, music, literature, and multimedia arts. 10, natural resource management. Developing and implementing a comprehensive program for the management of Ghana's natural resources. This would include oil and gas, solid minerals, water and marine resources, and land and forest resources. As a target, there shall be no export of raw materials from Ghana in any form or nature without a minimum of 60% value addition by the year 2030. This will usher in Ghana's decade of industrial transformation spanning the year 2025 to 2035. 11, decarbonization and climate resilience. Scaling up government's current efforts at reducing Ghana's carbon footprints and facilitating access to the carbon trading markets, as well as establishing mechanisms to strengthen the country's preparedness against the negative effects of climate change and climate variability. 12. National security and defense optimization. Deploying resources to strengthen national security and defense mechanisms and infrastructure to deal substantively with emerging security threats and challenges, particularly in the Sahelian region. 
2013, downsizing government, overhauling the architecture of the public service in Ghana by consolidating some existing ministries, departments, and agencies. This will lead to a lean government structure that will ensure operational efficiency and effectiveness in the delivery, in the delivery of government services and also reduce costs to the national budget. 14. Strategic engagement with the international community. Restructuring Ghana's diplomatic and economic relations with the international community. Yeah, first of all, tap tap send. See, tap tap send. I'm a send it. I is so easy. I'm Ghana for this year. I want Netherlands. So, what Netherlands? They are this way. A good news, man. You answer. So, what Netherlands? Now, what send this car? At the Ako Ghana, Ako to bank accounts, man. I say, move on money wallet. So, I simple through ideal payment. Tap tap funds. Who you see? And one. Ebe bo ama sika sen na ho sen na so simple and reliable and no dan chen so a ye fees and i rate e de ma no e wo suru ye pa ye san so nte wo hwe se do nimu no tap tap sen so available e wo USA Canada UK Ireland Germany Italy France Belgium Spain Portugal na fe Dubai se de tie na wo ba download app no e wo app store na play store na ye bi se promo code no abo wan ga na she ho e ba sa ye ma wo 5 pounds and 5 euros and 10 dollars Depends on baby our there's a tap tap send it there. Papa no no indeed.